this is my latest upgrade to the system. In the current version, the Odroid is just powered off the switch live of the car. So when you switch the ignition on and off, the Odroid switches on and off. But it's not ideal because if you switch the ignition off like that without shutting the Odroid down properly, then it can corrupt the memory card. And it has the disadvantage that if you just want to nip into a shop for a few minutes or you get your petrol or whatever, the Odroid's powered off and then it's got to go through the whole boot up sequence again. So I was researching a way where I could have the Odroid power down um, in, a, in a proper nice controlled shutdown after a certain delay so that you don't have to have it powered off straight away. Um, so it could maybe stay on for 10-20 for minutes before it powers itself off. So I've managed to achieve this using the Arduino. Um, basically what there is is a, there's a deep sleep mode in the Arduino which you can activate. Um, which I've managed to get it so that it's consuming only 4 milliamps in that state, um, which is very low and, and the, the wouldn't cause any significant drain on the battery. Um, but to do that, I've had to, to do a little bit of modification to the sketch, of course, and a bit of physical rewiring. So what we have to do now is make sure that the, uh, the Arduino is powered from permanent 12 volt live so that it can stay in um, permanently powered state, but it can go into sleep mode and wake itself up when it detects that the ACC gets switched on and off. So to do that, I've added um, one of these relay shields, which are readily available on eBay. They're only about five, six pounds, really cheap. Uh, but it's a four channel relay module, which is uh, sort of hardwired into four of the, the digital outputs on the Arduino. So because it's on four fixed digital outputs, I've had to remap some of the the, the button matrix scanning connection. So I've updated my sketch um, uh, to do that and I'll update my wiring diagram as well. Um, so what happens here is that we've got uh, permanent 12 volt power to the Arduino now. So I've had to, to solder another connection on the back of this main socket here. But I've taken, um, I've used quite a thick wire here because I'm putting that through the relay so that will actually power the Odroid through this 12 volt to 5 volt adapter. So it can take a couple of amps, so I've used some, some decent cable and then taken a loop through to power the, um, the Arduino here. Now the ACC, instead of powering the um, Arduino as it did before, that goes to one of the digital inputs here which is configured as an interrupt. Now what I've had to do is use a potential divider, so just a couple of resistors here, to drop that voltage down from the 12 volts to the 5 volts that, um, that the Arduino can handle. If you don't do that, you'll end up blowing the digital input on the Arduino. So the Arduino will sit there. I've modified the sketch. It'll monitor this um, digital input here, uh, which is the ACC. So when you turn the ignition off, um, it will detect that that's gone low. It will wait for a period that you define in the sketch. I've set it to 10 minutes. Um, and then after 10 minutes, using the USB that we've already got connected to the Odroid, um, so that we could do the track skipping forward and backwards, so that, that already exists, what it does is send a key code, which launches the terminal emulator on the Arduino, uh, on the Odroid, on the Android system, um, and then it sends a reboot minus P command, which is actually a shutdown on the, on the terminal, on the command line, shuts down the, um, the Android system, gracefully and then after a few seconds it'll switch off this relay turning the power off to the Odroid and then it will put itself into deep sleep mode. Uh, there's a couple of other things that we have to, to do to make sure that that deep sleep mode works properly so um, I've got another Arduino board here. Um, one of the issues is that there's a, an LED, a little surface mount LED on here uh, which stays permanently on all the time when power is applied now that actually draws about 3 milliamps itself, which isn't, isn't a lot, uh, but when you're trying to get down to as low as possible, um, um, you know, the, the standby current of this is only 4 milliamps without the LED, then it's almost double. So what I would recommend doing is just desoldering that power LED, get rid of that, you save yourself 3 milliamps of standby current straight away. Uh, the other thing that is very important is the USB cable that's going from the Arduino to the Odroid is you need to cut, you might be able to just see there, I've, I've had to cut the, the 5 volt supply cable there. The problem is that you end up uh, back feeding from the permanent live of the car through the USB and it ends up powering the hub uh, and other devices on the um, connected into the Odroid. So you definitely need to do that otherwise you'll end up drawing all, you know, loads of current and, and um, it'll drain your battery pretty quickly. 
Um, so what I've also done here as well is because I had a separate relay mounted here to switch the touch matrix on and off, the, the Jaguar touch matrix on and off, um, because I've got four relays here now, I've just used one of the second relays uh, to switch that touch matrix on and off. So when we're in Android mode, that will switch off the Jaguar um, touchscreen. Um, simple, as before, just a slightly different mechanism to do that. Um, so that's it really, I'm about to put it in my car, uh, and then um, I'll give you a demo. Right, so I've now got the system installed back in my car again. Uh, it's currently in the powered off state, so I've got my O-Droid, which lives in the glove compartment. Eventually I want to move it to underneath uh, to free this out, so I can put normal, normal junk back in here. But for now it's just in the glove compartment. So you can see there's no power lights on the um, digital to analog converter or the O-Droid. Uh, I've powered the digital to analog converter off the same output of the power supply as the O-Droid. So it's got a dual uh, USB output. So we're currently in powered off state, as I say. So if I turn the ignition onto the car, the system will power itself up. See, that's the O-Droid booting up. That's the Android splash screen. Have a look again at the LEDs. So you can see the LEDs on the digital to audio converter, digital to analog converter, rather, are, um, are on. So we're going through the boot animation process at the moment. Um, it takes about 40-45 seconds to boot up Android from a cold boot. So it's not a huge amount of time, but it still can be annoying. Um, you know, if you've filled yourself up with petrol, you come back in, you want to use your nav, and then you can't drive straight off if you don't know where you're going. So this is it, it's booted up now. Um, what I can do to demonstrate is if I switch the key off now. So that's the ignition off. So previously it would have powered down the O-Droid straight away, giving it a, a, a hard power off, which is not really what we want. If you're looking here, so we've still got the LEDs on, so the power is still being applied. If we look back at the touchscreen, if I switch the ignition back on again, there you go. So it's still um, still booted up. It's just running in the background because when we switch the ignition off, the power goes off to the to the LCD panel because the RTD board is still powered off the uh, the switch live. And what we can also do at this point, which we couldn't do before, is go from this state to start the engine. So at that point the switch live drops out which would have powered off the, the O-Droid and caused it to reboot uh, but now you can see we're still in our Android system which is brilliant so if I turn the key off every time you, t you cycle the ignition like that and the the switch live toggles it resets the timer so it's another 10 minutes from now um, so we can see the LED is still on uh, so it's no point sitting here for 10 minutes you'll have to just take my word for it but after 10 minutes the um, the Arduino will send uh, an F7 key code to the O-Droid which pops up the terminal emulator which you can't see any of this happening because the screen's off but it pops up the terminal emulator it types reboot space minus P enter which causes a soft shutdown of, of the O-Droid system so then when, it, when it's in its um, sort of halted state after about five seconds or so uh, the relay switches off uh, power's cut to the O-Droid and then the Arduino goes into into this sleep mode, um, and because ACC is connected to one of the interrupt lines, um, you don't need to pole it or anything. That'll actually trigger a, a hardware function in the system, which will wake it up from sleep, switch the relay on, and the whole the whole system reboots. So that's it. Nice and simple. A minimal amount of external components. Just needs a little bit of rewiring and that and that relay board really. Um, there you go. Thank you very much.